gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow, give, go. Gather, grow.
Kingdom Focused. Good evening, KFA family. So pleased to join you on this Tuesday night Bible study. This is the day that the Lord has made. God has blessed us to stay connected, to join together, touching and agreeing by God's word. The Bible says that we ought to study to show ourselves approved unto God. I'm Reverend Hilda Hudson, and I'm so glad uh, to share with you the word of God as God laid upon my heart uh, to share with you what God has shared with me. Thank you to Pastor Watley for this invitation tonight. Listen, if this is your first time joining with us, we encourage you to fill out the information that's made available to you on the screen so that we can stay connected with you and let you know the wonderful things that the Lord is doing here at K-Fame, that's Kingdom Fellowship AME Church. And if you are uh, out of the area, we give you a Holy Ghost shout out for staying connected with us. All those persons who are visiting both far and near. We welcome you to the K Fame family and this Bible study evening. And so certainly we understand that worship is not complete without giving. And so the giving opportunities are made available to you on the screen. And so we ask that you would govern yourselves accordingly. We understand that we cannot beat God at giving. Well, let's go ahead and get into the Word of God, the Word of God um, that I want to share with you as God uh, shared with me is talking about God's ability and God's willingness, God's ability and God's willingness. And so I want to encourage us tonight that um, this particular subject is one that perhaps uh, touches us and some of us at various times and uh, one time or another, and it's an opportunity for us to really understand uh, who God is in terms of God's ability and God's willingness uh, to meet our needs or to do uh, various things in our lives to, uh, to 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 grant promises. God had some promises, amen. Uh, that he has for both us generally and individually. And so, uh, so we're talking about God's ability and God's willingness. And so most uh, Christians, most believers know that God can uh, or is able to do anything. And um, the ones who uh, have yet to have that understanding of who's, uh, who God is and God's ability to do uh, anything have yet to receive or understand the revelation, the fact of who God is being an omnipotent God, a God who is omniscient, all-knowing, a God who is omnipresent uh, everywhere and all-powerful, all-knowing, all present everywhere, all at the same time. They have yet to receive that revelation of, of who God is in terms of not only who God is in terms of his ability, but God's willingness. And so the reason why God is able to do, uh huh, able to do anything is because God, He is the one who's created uh, things by faith and God created things by the word and the power of His word. And so oftentimes we struggle or the problem is uh, where there's um, uh, fully uh, understanding that God is able or, uh, or fully understanding that God is willing, but will God do it? Is, is God able? Understand that He's, uh, we, we, we know that He's willing. But will God perform it, the ability of God? And so for that reason, I want us to take a look at Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3. And there it reads, When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. And notice that the uh, leper, he, the words that he used, he says, if you are willing, you can. And so uh, the leper didn't have a problem with God's ability uh, but it suggests that he had a problem with God's willingness. And so God's uh, a willingness is what we're, we're, we're talking about, and coupled with his ability. And so one essential truth that we must believe that God has the ability um, and that it equals to his willingness and that we cannot decouple his ability and his willingness. We cannot decouple his willingness and his ability. And so if we recognize that God has the ability, uh, but we fail to recognize that God is willing uh, our belief, you know, sort of uh, is incongruent. We defeat the promises of God in our lives if we don't have a proper understanding of God's ability and God's willingness and vice versa. We must uh, believe that what God says he's willing to do, that God is able to do. 
And, and conversely, we must believe that what God is, uh, his ability to do, that he is willing to do that. And so, um, so they, they work hand in hand. They are consistent with who God is, that God is both willing and God is both able. And so anytime anyone sell, tells you or you think about, um, you know, or challenged that, that God uh, cannot do something, uh, all we have to do is go to God's word. You know, we don't have to argue with anyone. We don't have to try to figure it out ourselves. We don't have to uh, Google uh, our way of understanding of God. We have God's word that speaks to us. And so oftentimes our problem is, is that we make the, the mistake of what we believe about God based on what we see in others and even ourselves. That what we see in others, we, uh, you know, uh, wrongly apply those attributes to, to God. And so uh, what do we see? We see, uh, you know, if we're honest, we see, um, you know, someone who, uh, you know, have the ability to, to help someone. But they may not be uh, willing to help someone. Uh, and then there are some people who are willing to help, but they may not have uh, the ability. They may not have the resources to help out. And so, uh, likewise, you and I, we may have the ability, we may have the resources, we may have, um, you know, influence, we may have uh, money, we may have uh, time, but we may not be willing you know, and so uh, understand that. And so what God says in his word is that he is both able to do and he's willing to do. And we are um, created in his image. We are his, uh, the crown of his creation. We are the masterpiece. We are his children. And we are called uh, to live in the image of Christ. And so uh, many uh, believers, uh, when you first come to Christ, and even if you don't um, have a proper understanding of how uh, God works, uh, are under the impression that God gives according to our actions, according to what we do, according to uh, what we say, according to, uh, you know, whether we're doing what God wants us to do or not. That many p people believe that if we are good enough, God gives us health, God gives us uh, promotion, God meets our needs. And if we don't, that God will punish us. Um, so, you know, again, this sometimes people have the improper thought about God's position on giving. God's position on giving is uh, inconsistent or contrary to our position uh, when we talk about giving. And so oftentimes this world uh, position is giving is uh, only giving based upon what they can get. Not so in uh, God's economy. And so it's not uh, works righteousness. It's not that we work uh, so much for the Lord and the Lord rewards us. And that if we don't, that the Lord will uh, somehow smite us or somehow chastise us. The truth of God's word is that God is liberal. God is generous. God is replete uh, with giving. God is uh, very nature is to give. God is the first and the best giver. He gave us his, his only begotten son. God is uh, the best best giver. And so a hallmark, really the hallmark of a Christian life is one of the hallmarks rather is uh, is giving. And so uh, it's usually the last stronghold of giving though, but uh, but the, a hallmark of uh, the life of a Christian is being a giver because we model after Christ. And so Christ gives liberally and it does not predicated on what we do or what we say. And so Going back to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, uh, here the leper uh, uses the nomenclature, he uses the, uh, the language, he says, if, uh, if you are willing. He says, if, let's, let's talk about if. And so if, uh, you know, when we think about if, if is a conditional word. It connotes a stipulation or a supposition. Um, it suggests that something has to be uh, done or something has to happen first before something else is done. And so, uh, so he has this if, you know, uh, uh, conversation or thought about uh, Jesus. And then he says, if you are willing. And so uh, don't read the Bible too fast because the adjective willing means ready, eager, prepared to do something. And, 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 and note that being willing to do something is not the same as wanting to do something. Amen, somebody. I, I may be willing to drive uh, into D.C. to go to my job, but I may not want to. I may not want to. I may be willing to go to the gym, but I... Well, if you know me, I don't want to go to the gym. But for some, they may be willing to go to the gym, but they may not want to. Um, I may be willing to use my talents, my gifts, my resources uh, to further the kingdom of God, but I may not want to doing the right things for the wrong motives. And so uh, Jesus is saying, 
that I am willing and I am able. Jesus does not have to be uh, uh, persuaded uh, by anything. Jesus doesn't have to be conjoled. Jesus doesn't have to be um you know, barter or, or, or have to, uh, to, to, uh, uh, to, to be tricked or anything to, to, uh, to, to do what he says he's going to do. He says, I can do it and I'm ready to do it and I'm willing to do it. And so, uh, Jesus is unlike us, you know, sometimes we like, well, I'll do it, but you know, I'll do it if this happens. I'll do it, but I'll, you know, I don't want to do it. Um, That's not uh, what Jesus does. Jesus is willing and Jesus is able. And so knowing God is willing and able, it helps us to have a proper perspective of how God operates in our lives, how it is that God fulfills uh, the promises and plans in our lives. And so in many respects, uh, we come to Jesus like those lepers, like the leper did with our condition and with our concerns. We come... uh, uh, and, and don't, you know, we can't uh, talk too much about the, the leper um, in terms of that because he came to the right place. You know, he, he came to the person who could do something about his condition, whether he had questions, whether he had doubts. He was still in the presence of the one who had all power to make a difference in his life. And so oftentimes when we uh, find ourselves in conditions and, 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 and situations and circumstances, who do we go to? Do we go to uh, the one who can make a difference, the one who can change, the one who can uh, to comfort, the one who can heal, the one who can restore? Or do we try to figure it out ourselves? Or do we go to someone else who uh, may be willing, but they don't have the ability? Or do we go to someone who has the ability, but they, you know, they don't feel like it. They don't have, they may not be willing. And so we come uh, like this leper who understands that he, uh, you know, if you can, you can make me clean. And so believing that Jesus is willing, but it gets a little murky when it comes to believing in God's ability. And so uh, in order to really understand it or get to a place where we are fully uh, established in this area, where we understand that God is both, we have to develop a revelation of God's integrity integrity through God's word. And we can go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17, where it lets us know that because God wanted to make uh, an unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to his heirs, I'm reading from an NIV version, it says, what uh, make it very clear to his heirs of what was promised, he uh, made it with an oath. And so uh, in some uh, version, I think the New King James Version, it says that God is willing uh, more abundantly to show the heirs his immutability of his counsel. And he confirmed it by an oath. And so I like the King James Version. Let's break that down a little bit. It says, first of all, that we have to know that Jesus says, I'm willing. And in the King James, it says more abundantly. And so what does that do? And he says, to show the heirs of promise. That's you and me, that we are the heirs. We are the king's kids. We are children of the most high God. To show them what? To show them the immutability of his counsel. And that's just a big word to talk about the unchangeability of his word, the unchanges the unchangeability of what he says and how it is that it's consistent to what he does. And so God wants to show you and I that his word is unchangeable, that his, uh, his, his, his actions are consistent with his word. We need to understand once and for all that God says what he says and does what he says. He means what he says and does what he says that he's going to do. And so God uh, confirmed it with an oath is the last verse in, uh, in that chapter in that verse of Hebrews, it says he confirmed it with an oath. And uh, it lets us know that God made a promise and God made an oath. God made a promise and God made an oath. And then he positioned himself between the two. And so it made it impossible for God to do otherwise. It made it impossible for God to lie. And we know the Bible talks about in Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, that God is not a man or human being that he uh, will lie or he does not lie. And he's not the son of man that he shouldn't uh, change his mind. That if God says it, if God speaks it, if God spoke it, that God's going to perform that God's going to do just what God says. God's not like us. Uh, God's not going to uh, flip-flop on his words. God's not going to uh, to, to lie or have half-truths. God's going to go full throat 
in what he says and means what he says. And so what God says is in his word, God means when God says it, he gives freely. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about it. And uh, we need to get this revelation in our lives. We will never doubt God's willingness and ability when we understand the character and the very nature of who God is and allow the revelation to seep in our mind despite what we see, despite how we feel, that we are to trust what God has said, what God has done, and what God God has promised in our lives. So never doubt God's ability of what God can do. And what can God do? The Bible says God can do exceedingly abundantly. Come on now. Ephesians chapter 3 and 20. God can do exceedingly abundantly, immeasurably, as one uh, version says, more than we can ever ask, imagine, or even think according to the power that works within us. I don't know about you, but that shouts me because sometimes I don't even have to uh, say it out loud. I can just think it and God is already um, on on the job to do exceedingly and abundantly. And so what it is it that uh, we can ask or imagine? Don't ever limit yourself to uh, putting God in a box or limit our thinking and what God can and cannot do. Never think that there's a problem or a situation that God cannot handle that God is unchanging, that God is uh, can do exceedingly abundantly. There's nothing that is too hard for our God. And listen, that God, uh, his standard is exceedingly. His standard is immeasurably. The, according to Ephesians chapter 3 and 20, it sets the standard to God's ability to do just what he says, exceedingly and abundantly. We don't serve an average God. We don't serve a God of mediocrity. We serve a God who is exceedingly and abundantly, who does above what we can ever ask or even think. Think about that. Amen. That shouts me. And so the standard is according to the power that works within us. And so the power that works with us in us, we can look to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 19 through 22. We may not have time to, to really unpack that, but the extent of God's power in us uh, is that same power that was used to raise Christ from the dead and to set him on the right hand of God. It's the same power that's available to work in our life. God is able and God is willing. If we are not living an abundant life, John 10 and 10 says, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. He's not talking about uh, material cars. He's not talking about Teslas. He's not talking about um, all these various uh, things that we like to buy, materialism. He's talking about the, the abundant life that encompasses a life that is free in Christ, a life that comes with peace, that comes with joy, that comes with a life of being obedient to the word of God, that we may live freely. It comes with a peace that surpasses all understanding. And even if uh, God allows us to uh, have um, various things, but we have these things that don't have us, that we have a perspective of these things that uh, God is priority in our lives and the abundant life. We can live in this world of darkness and live as, as lights and as emissaries to make a different ends this life. Are you taking God as his word? Are you taking God as his word? That's the question. Uh, take a moment to think about that. What has God said to you? What has God promised you? What has God yet to uh, manifest in your life? Are you uh, hanging on to the promises that God has made or have you abandoned uh, it thinking that God has forgotten or that God is not going to perform it? Think about that. How is it that uh, we're, we're trusting God and taking him at his word. Come here, Abraham. In Romans chapter 4, verses 19 and 21, Abraham testifies about uh, trusting God and taking God at his word. Romans chapter 4, verses 19 through 21. And here it reads, Abraham was almost 100 years old, much past the age for having children. Sarah could not have children as well. Abraham thought about all of this, but his faith in God never became weak. He never doubted God. Uh, he never doubted that God would keep his promise, and he never uh, stopped trusting God. He he didn't grow, um, you know, weary in his faith. In fact, the Bible talks about in verse twenty. He said it, it says he grew stronger in his faith, and he gave praises uh, to God. In verse twenty one, here it is: Abraham felt sure. Or, in other words, he was persuaded that God was able to do what God had promised and what God had purposed in his life. Are you persuaded? Are you persuaded in spite of what you see, in spite of what you say, in spite of what you told yourself, in spite of what others say? Are you persuaded 
that in spite of all of that, that God's promises is going to be fulfilled, are going to be fulfilled in your life. God's promises are going to manifest in your life. That God said whatever he said to you, how many ever years ago, if, if it hadn't come to pass just yet, just hang on to the promises of God. If it's consistent with his word, if it's consistent with his plans for your life, hang on to the promises that God has for your life. And we are to hold fast to God's word and to become fully persuaded that's unequivocally, without any doubt, without any, uh, you know, where people are, are trying to challenge us. You know, I, was like, I don't care what you say. I'm fully persuaded, fully persuaded that God is going to perform and God is willing to perform according to his promise. How many of you are looking at, for uh, the promises of God, all of the promises that God has for your life? Like I said earlier, God has some promises that are uh, general uh, for, for all of us. And then God has some specific promises uh, for us. I don't know about you, but I want all of the promises that God has for our uh, lives or for my life. And so we can be confident in the gifts and callings that God has, uh, you know, in our lives because God, and he's not like us and gives us a gift and it takes it away according to how we receive the gift, according to, uh, uh, you know, if we appreciate the gift, God gives the gifts and says, uh, you know, the gift is there. I'm not taking it back. Now it's up to us. If we're going to use the gift, if we're going to unwrap the gift, if we're going to nurture the gift, if we're going to hone the gift, God is not a giver like we are. When God gives, God gives the very best. God gives without um, repentance, without taking it away, without changing God's mind. God gives us the very best that God has. And so God God's willingness and ability is above anything that we can ever ask or think. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing that's impossible for our God. Think about that. What has God promised you? What has God said to you? What has God um, has in store for you that you have yet to seek after God for? You know, oftentimes we uh, limit ourselves or we put limits on what God uh, can do. And uh, not understanding that not only that, that God can do it, but God will do it. He has both the willingness and the ability to do that. And so uh, God's ability equals his, his willingness. If we need to take some notes here, God's ability equals his willingness. Uh, we must believe that God, uh, what God says he's willing to do and is able to do. That uh, no matter what circumstances, there's nothing too hard for, for God. We're living in difficult times. We're living in um, seemingly uh, a perpetual state of darkness. And, and yet God continues to call men, women, boys and girls to be lights, to be emissaries, to be uh, vessels in this world that we can make a difference, that we can navigate and we can live uh, in spite of what we see, in spite of what we feel. And it, it's not that we, uh, you know, have our head in the sand, that we're not in touch with what's going on, but we are uh, more in touch with, uh, with our Heavenly Father, with our Creator, with our faith that keeps us anchored and keeps us rooted in God's Word. Why? Because we understand uh, God's able to, to keep us, uh, uh, don't let me get that, keep us from falling, <laughs> keep us from uh, faltering. God is able to keep us from, uh, to, from from flipping out, you know, in terms of all this going on. And certainly we, we, you know, if ever a time we wanted to, uh, you know, abandon our faith and just and, and do things on our own, uh, we live in, in those times. But because of our faith, we are rooted, we're anchored in the word of God because we know ultimately that God has the very best uh, for us and that God can help us to navigate and to charter uh, the world in which we live in. And so there are things that God wants to do in our lives to use us to be uh, lights in this world of darkness, to make a difference in our families, in our communities, in our homes, in our churches, in our workplaces that only can be done if we allow uh, the light of Christ to be shined in and through us. And so, beloved, uh, think about that. Are we trusting God at his word? Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name tonight. We ask God that you would continue to open our hearts and open our minds to those things that you would have for our lives, to expand our faith, to think beyond what we can see and what we can uh, think, God, that you have things in store for us that we can't even imagine. And so, God, we trust in your ability. We trust in your willingness. We trust in the promises that you have yet to manifest in our 
our lives. We trust God that someone here tonight has received your word and will seek after you in a greater way and that someone here tonight will seek after you in a way that they have never uh, sought after you before. We pray, God, that someone tonight will make a decision uh, that they will trust you even more, that they will trust not only in your willingness, but in your ability to do that which you can only do. And that is exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask. I think there's nothing that is too hard for you. And we thank you, God, for this mantra that uh, we can live by because it's evident in your word. And we thank you for the testimony that it shall be evident in our life. This is our kingdom prayer. And we believe it by faith in Jesus name. Amen. Now, if you are not, um, don't have a relationship of God that we've been talking about, that we've been teaching about, who is exceedingly and abundantly, who is both willing and able, uh, know that he is both willing and able to make a difference in your life. And so all you need to do is to uh, complete the information that's available on your screen to, uh, to let us know. Type in the chat that I want to uh, get to know uh, Jesus. I want to know him not only for his willingness, but his ability to make a difference in my life. We would love for you to join with us, to partner with us as kingdom family, as we make a difference in this world, as we gather, grow, and we give, and we go, as we love on uh, the world through the love of Christ. And so if that is you, we would love for you to uh, partner with us, partner with God, uh, ultimately, so that we can grow together in the things of God. Certainly, we encourage you all to stay connected with us uh, by our social media assets, all of our um, ways in which we stay connected. We certainly invite you all to join Pastor Watley at Resurrection Baptist Church tomorrow night. That's May 18th at 7 p.m. If you are in the Silver Spring area, uh, Pastor will be preaching there and would love to have your amens to come out to be a part of uh, that worship service. Until we shall meet again. It's been a stone gas. Continue to remain kingdom focused. God bless you.